Howdy folks, just finishing up a little soldering project. Actually, we'll finish it up later. Uh, just turn that off. Uh, anyone who... I'm doing this video today to maybe save a few folks a few bucks. What we're looking at is one of these inflatable uh, pumps for inflatables. You know, tow behind, stand-up paddle boards, uh, inflatable kayaks. Lots of things out there now. And these are coming down in price, at least where they used to be. At least where I first saw them from, which was in the kiteboarding industry. You know, I, I kite ski and kiteboard, and I've always used these hand pumps. We'll get to that in a bit, and why I wanted one of these. But, uh, in the kiting industry, when these first came out several years ago, they were hundreds of dollars. Now, I think they're coming down in price, but they're still super expensive. But, if you have a little bit of RC LiPo battery knowledge or LiPo battery knowledge from any other hobby such as electric skateboarding whatever you can find these for cheaper if you get the ones without the batteries now these pumps they're a two-stage pump they use a um, fan a high volume fan pump which is low pressure and then they use a low volume but high pressure piston pump so the idea is the fan pump comes on first gives most of the volume in your inflatable, whatever you're filling up, and then to top it up to the higher pressure, the fan pump switches off and the piston pump engages. And maybe in another video we'll open it up to see how it works. It's pretty cool inside. Like I said, uh, big money, especially if you have to buy them with the batteries in them, for us, we can use our little lithium batteries to power them and save a lot of money and also make them more versatile. So that's primarily what this video is going to be about. If you've always wanted an electric pump or you wanted to save a few bucks by getting the one without a battery and you're already into RC or some type of other uh, hobby that uses lithium packs, you can do this. Because this one I actually bought, it was $50. Like I said, it was used and um, the fellow was selling it because he wanted one with a battery. And this one, it was a pain, it came with these cables. That's what I was doing here. I was just soldering a plug onto these cables so I might be able to use it with a standard car battery, but I doubt I ever will. Just thought it might be a good idea while I'm out here soldering this plug on. I just put a little XD60 on this pump so I can plug it into my 3S LiPo batteries. These fully charged at 12.6 volts, so it'll work perfect for this because let's face it, when, when it's windy out and we want to go kiting, we're out the door. We can't wait around for a battery to charge. We have to hit that wind window. Obviously, if you had bigger LiPo packs, you know, this is just a 2200 millivolt one, or milliamp hour one. If you had a 4000 or a 5000 milliamp hour pack, yeah, you'd get lots of, uh, lots of cycles out of it. Or you could take two packs with you, you know. Lots of ver options, that's what's cool about this, without having a built-in battery. And what else? Oh yeah, so the reason, yeah, a lot of people, ah, you're just lazy, man. Just use the pump. Let me tell you, partner, when it's minus 10 or colder out Celsius and you're trying to pump a kite up, these things get cock stiff and boy, oh boy, you can work up a huge sweat just getting your kite pumped up before you even get going. And then you're chilled for, you know, half an hour, well, 15 minutes. It's just a pain in the ass. And two weeks ago, I actually snapped the pump. I actually snapped the handle right off. You know, I've tried different lubrication in this, thinner for the winter helps a little bit but when it's cold like i said these things freeze solid they're so stiff and i wait i wasted my whole day i would have paid anything at that point to have an electric pump you know i took it was a 20 minute hike down to the lake to set the kite up get everything out and you know, i'm pumping it up snap the pump 20 minute hike back just a garbage day and it would have been beautiful we had fresh snow uh, the wind was perfect totally missed out on it because of this damn thing so this is going to hopefully help that. Of course, now that I've got it, we'll never have an epic day like that again. But uh, I digress, and we'll, we'll go outside, see how it works. And I'm going to try use it on my biggest kite that I've got, which is 14 meter, to give you an idea of time and how much uh, energy is left in this pack when we're done. See you outside. See if we can do this in one take without any screw-ups. Yeah, we've got the helper out here. That's going to be a hindrance. Um, so anyways, the pump comes in this little bag, or at least this one did, uh, comes with a hose. I don't know about how good these hoses are going to hold up in the cold. I'm probably going to put my old kite pump hose on here. Uh, this hose was already cracked and the fellow had taped it before, so 
I don't know if I'd hold much trust out in this, but uh, it'll work for our purposes today. Come on, get out of the way. That's good. Yes, that's a good helper, but you need to stay out of the way. So, and in this little pack, you can also put your battery. Again, we've got the 2200 milliamp hour one. And uh, if I had a bigger pack, I'd probably use it. This is a fully charged one. Come on, Finn. Come on. You can get out of the way here. So I'm just going to plug it into that plug that we soldered on. And there's a little on and off switch here. And it's auto, it's, this has got an automatic uh, feature. So when it reaches the pressure, it automatically shuts off. Um, this one's in kilopascals, it's in metric. So uh, I like setting my 14 meter to about 8, 8 PSI. So that's 55 kilopascals. So, so we've got it set to here. And there's an inlet and an outlet. So you could also use this to suck the air out of the kite um, to really draw all the air out so it's easier to pack. I, I rarely do that. I never did it with my hand pump, so I doubt I'd do it with this one. So we want to hook this to the out port. And hook this into the filler nozzle, the filler nipple on the kite. And if it was windy out, yeah, you'd probably want to tie in your little hook here to the valve stem. Now I'm not going to edit this for time or anything, because I want to give you guys an idea of the actual time it takes. So we're all set up, out. Going in, so we hit the start button. And so now you'll hear that that's the uh, high volume fan pump going right now. And then once the bladders fill up, once the pressure builds, it'll automatically switch over to the, to the lower volume, higher pressure pump. And you'll hear it, it's very distinctive. Now when all this is going on, you can do something valuable with your time. You can walk out your kite lines. You can get your harness put on. Um, you know, put out your skis, your board, get your helmet on. Anything but pumping. Now, obviously, I'd still recommend um, bringing the bringing your hand pump along just in case this craps out, battery craps out, stuff happens, right? Uh, and by all means, if anyone knows how to keep a manual pump running free, smooth not cock stiff in the winter, I'd love to know, you know, what kind of lubrication you're using. Like I said, I've used thin weight silicone spray, I've used thin um, shock oil, silicone shock oil, nothing helps. When it gets cold, that thing is stiff as hell, and yeah, you break them. At least I do, but I'm an idiot. And yeah, if it was blowing good, I'd anchor this with a rock or a stick. Uh, if I'm kite board, or if I'm kite skiing on a lake, you know, I'll use my ice screw, tie it in that way, tie it onto my front bridles, so the kite doesn't blow away. Obviously, we're wind, we're we're upwind. Wind would be blowing this way as you pump up your kite normally. As you see, it goes pretty quick. We're, uh, front bladder is pretty much inflated. The struts are starting to go now. Again, this is a 14 meter kite, so it's, it's taking quite a bit of air. Okay, and there's the high pressure pump that's kicked in now. Okay, what do you think? Think it's gonna work? Keep me from coming home grumpy, right? And when it's done, we'll take a look at the battery voltage just to see how much it's dropped. And that'll give you a good idea how to gauge if the 2200 milliamp is enough. Again, fully charged, so it'll be interesting to see.
and I'm probably going to use this IAP 6000 milliamp 3S packs uh, that I had for a hex copter. I'm probably going to use those. But we'll see. Thinking could probably had it done by hand by now. Yeah, maybe. So that's it. I don't know what. What do you think? Five minutes? We'll check when we do the video. But. Oh, I missed the ball seat. There we go. So yeah, that's, that's tight. That's probably a little bit higher than most people would go. But, uh, when it's cold, yeah, you want it. You want it a little, little higher in pressure. So let's take the battery out and check the voltage. Let me guess, I don't have the voltage checker. I thought I put it in there. Guess I didn't. I'll leave this here and I'll be right back. It is a 14, just in case anyone's, my claims are dubious here. Uh, so here's the battery. And let's have a look at the pack voltage here. Here's cell voltage and pack voltage. Come on, where are you? So 387, 388, 388, all 11.6. So we're down, you know, we've used maybe, not quite, maybe 40% capacity. So you'd certainly be able to get uh, two fills out of a 2200 milliamp. Um, but yeah, if you had a bigger pack, you'd probably want to take it with you or take two. Or if you wanted to take it, uh, you know, if you just wanted to grab a, a balance or a, a storage pack, one that's at a 50% uh, storage state, um, yeah, you'd probably want to take at least a 4,000 milliamp pack or long. You know, at 50%, this would give you one fill, but it would probably be draining the pack down below you know, the 80% capacity value. So, anyways, hope that gave you guys, anyone who wants to buy one of these cheaper pumps a try. If you can find one for cheap, I certainly wouldn't pay hundreds of dollars for one. But, it, uh, you know, if you've got any type of inflatable that uh, you're sick of using the old hand pumpy on, one without a battery, this gives you many more options to power it. Cheers folks, have a good one.